The standard boss fight involves one boss who needs to be tanked. And that tank needs to be healed by a healer. And that boss needs to be killed before he enrages, so you need lots of good DPS to kill it before that happens. And maybe sprinkle in a tank swap, add spawns, and a little AoE damage so the healers have to heal the DPS as well, and you've got yourself a standard boss fight. Most bosses in WoW are just a variation of this formula, with an added gimmick that needs to be overcome, like running to the outer platforms in the Lich King fight. This list will go over boss fights that either throw the standard formula out the window and do something wholly unique, or just have a really crazy gimmick on top of the standard formula. Very well, let the game begin. Number 10, the Karazhan Chess Event. This boss fight in the Burning Crusade Karazhan played more like a game of battle chess rather than a standard boss fight. The objective of the match was simple, kill the enemy king. Only, the king in this game is the strongest piece on the board and is a total beefcake. So to take him down, you need to take out some of his support first, since some of the other pieces can heal and do tons of damage themselves. The actual rules of chess aren't really used. Raid members would just pick up a piece and move it around and attack stuff. Once the enemy king was dead, you won the match. The uniqueness of this fight was that you didn't actually fight a boss. In fact, your character didn't really matter much. You could theoretically do the fight with a raid full of hunters or priests or whatever, since the only thing that mattered was controlling the pieces and using them to fight. And the pieces didn't care what class you were. Since gear and skill cap was almost non-existent in this fight, it was basically considered a free loot boss. Since once you got the hang of it, it was pretty easy. Thousands of years without new playthings. I will enjoy this. Number 9, Darumu the Forgotten. Honestly, pretty standard boss fight, but with a pretty unique gimmick. Never mind his phase of looking for a hidden ad by moving the correct color over it. The real uniqueness of Darumu was his maze phase. During his third phase of the fight, Darumu would stop doing all of his abilities and start filling the room with purple shit, then leave a few patches of free space for the raid to stand in. Then he will start channeling his laser beam of death and slowly rotate around the room. The purple shit on the floor did a ton of damage, so you had to stay in the dry patches of land, which would open up in front of you slowly. As long as you were able to calmly follow the maze being created for you, you'd take almost no damage and the phase would be a cakewalk. This is not what happened though for the average raider. Plus the fight was notoriously buggy at the time, and sometimes a maze would never spawn and you'd be screwed. Or if you were like me at the time and had a not so great computer, that phase was a nightmare because all the particle effects slowed my computer to a crawl. The dry patches of land would just never show up on my screen, so I just have to trust that my raid knew what they were doing and run with them. I should also probably mention Orgorger from Blackrock Foundry here. He too was a pretty standard boss fight, only with a really unique maze phase. Orgorger would start rolling around the room and crashing into a wall in semi-random patterns. In order to stop him, you had to DPS down ore crates to drop ore. Once Orgorger rolled over enough of the ore, the phase would end. On Mythic Mode, he also shot out waves of fire during his maze phase, making it more hectic and harder to dodge things than normal. You are too late! The corruption is nearly complete! <laughs> Number 8, Shadow Lord Iskar. Iskar was another pretty standard boss fight, only with a totally and wholly unique mechanic. There was an item in the ray that you could throw to other players with an extra action button. If you held onto this item too long, it would stack a dot on you that would kill you eventually. And if someone did not hold the item, it would pulse AoE damage to the raid, so you'd had to pick it up. The item was also crucial and absolutely necessary for certain raid members to have in order to counter potentially raid wiping abilities. The first was a Mirage Winds debuff that would pull you to the edge of the platform in the room. The only way to get rid of the debuff was to have the item, and it would go out to multiple players at once, so the raid had to be responsible for throwing it to the next person who had the debuff after they got it themselves. During the ad phase, one of the ads would put a debuff on someone who would explode in 5 seconds and wipe the raid if it wasn't dispelled. Only, you couldn't dispel it without having a healer holding the item, 
In the same phase, there was another ad which did an incredibly hard-hitting chain AoE ability that needed to be interrupted, which, as you might have guessed by now, required the interrupter to be holding the item. Pretty much everything in the fight required you to use the item and pass it on to teammates, which is something you do not see very often. In fact, I'm not even sure if there is another fight in the game like it. The fight was basically a test of how well you could handle the mechanic on top of everything else going on in the raid. Evasive action! Man the guns! Number 7. The Gunship Battle The entire fight was just about shooting down the enemy ship with guns, while dealing with a bunch of ads who were trying to take down your ship as well. The enemy gunship would periodically freeze your ship's guns, which required you to jump onto the enemy ship and kill a mage to unfreeze your guns so that you could keep firing. All in all, it was basically just an ad fight where a few raid members would man the guns to shoot down the other ship which was still pretty unique. To a lesser extent, Flame Leviathan was also unique in that it was a boss fight done with vehicles, except you still pretty much just fought a boss, only with vehicles instead of your normal characters. And in both cases, the vehicles actually scaled with your gear, so the more gear you had, the more damage you did, unlike the Cares on Chess event. But just like the Chess event, Gunship was also considered a free loot boss, since once you got the hang of it, the fight was pretty easy. Even guilds who never stepped foot into heroic content would do the gunship fight on heroic, for the better gear, because it wasn't that much harder than normal mode. Number 6, The Spine of Deathwing Unlike the chess event in the gunship battle, Spine of Deathwing was actually the hardest fight in its raid even though it wasn't the final boss. Now, Spine of Deathwing was basically a glorified ad fight. You kill tentacle ads to spawn big elemental ads, which needed to absorb the corpses of little blood ads, but not before the big elemental ad was at a low enough health point, all to cause it to explode to reveal a tendon under Deathwing's armor which needed to be killed in order to pop off his plate. Repeat the above process three times and that's the Spine of Deathwing fight in a nutshell. But what's unique about this fight is the lack of an actual boss to kill. The fact that you're fighting on the back of a giant dragon who wants to throw you off if there's an uneven amount of people on one side. And the fact that the tendon you need to kill to pop off the plate is only available to DPS for 20 seconds, making it one of the few raid fights in the game which prioritized pure burst damage over everything else. The very first heroic raid kill of the fight had almost half the raid as mages, since they were one of the burstiest classes at the time that also had a legendary available to them from the previous raid. Spine of Deathwing is a unique fight for the battlefield the raid took place on, and for its unique win condition. Eons I have slept undisturbed. Now this. Creatures of flesh, now you will burn! Number 5. Lord Ryleth. Now this fight is one of a kind. For about 90% of the raid encounter, you DPS the boss's legs in order to get him to change direction. And what you want him to do is walk over active volcanoes that he spawns, as doing this enough times will break his armor and cause phase 2 to activate. But be careful, because if you steer him over too many non-active volcanoes, that will trigger constant AoE damage and eventually wipe the raid all while dealing with ad spawns and a few other raid mechanics, of course. So the fight boiled down to control DPS on legs to steer him in the right direction. Too much DPS might make him overturn, too little and he wouldn't turn fast enough. Too much on both legs and he'll just kinda go straight in a wobbly pattern. A very hard thing to achieve, especially for dot-based classes. Once his armor did break, the leg mechanic was done with and you just fought the boss like normal. If I fall into the abyss, I'll take all you mortals with me. Number 4, Razor Gore. Razor Gore was unique in being probably the very first non-conventional raid boss fight in the game. This boss fight had one person control Razor Gore with a mind control device, and you had to go around the room and break all the dragon eggs. While doing this, ads would come into the room and try to both kill the mind control person and Razor Gore. So the raid basically just had to protect the boss long enough for him to break all the dragon eggs. Then you killed the boss like normal. If the boss died before all the eggs got broke, you wiped. 
If you took too long, you'd be overwhelmed by ads. Pretty unique for a boss fight so early on in the game's history. And pretty hard for its time too. Razor Gore is part of the reason why most first bosses and raids are made a lot easier and mechanically simple than other bosses in the instance. Because too many guilds got stuck on the first boss being Razor Gore and disbanded due to lack of progression. Although, the boss probably most famous for this was the one right after Razor Gore. Blackwing Lair had two of its hardest fights at the beginning of the raid, something you won't ever see in modern WoW. While I'm on the topic of Blackwing Lair, I should probably mention Nefarian as well. Now, Nef wasn't a terribly unique boss fight in of himself. He was pretty standard as far as fighting dragons go, but he did have one very unique mechanic. Periodically throughout the fight, he'd put a debuff on players that would affect each and every class differently, and usually had something to do with the class's mechanics. For example, Neff would break the weapons of hunters who got the debuff. To counter it, they'd have to swap to a different weapon right before his debuff went out so the crappier weapon would get broken instead. Priest would get reverse heals, where instead of healing, all their heals would do damage instead. Druids would get stuck in cat form. Mages would randomly polymorph other raid members. Shaman totems would become hostile towards them, and etc etc. This is also the only boss fight that Blizzard actually goes back and updates whenever a new class is introduced. Death Knights will be gripped to Neff, Monks will be forced to roll for about 5 seconds, and Demon Hunters will have their screens turned pitch black, with only your UI showing. I'm Bob the Forge, to have a drive! Number 3, Hansgar and Franzak. Hans and Franz is a pretty standard double boss fight, where you fight two bosses at once, but they share a health pool. The unique thing about this fight is the room you do the encounter in is trying to kill you the whole time. You fight on conveyor belts that for the most part are constantly moving, with giant presses in the air that come down to try to kill you throughout the whole fight. They're pretty easy to avoid for the most part, but sometimes the stamps will be put into overdrive and you have to dance around the room for a bit while still doing the boss like normal. Hans and Franz is basically like Hygen's safety dance at all times. Hygen himself was also a pretty unique boss fight in Nax, who would sometimes make portions of his room explode, so the tank and melee DPS had to avoid it throughout the fight, while the range could just sit on a platform. But periodically throughout the fight, he'd kick everyone off his platform, and everyone had to go into the room and do the safety dance and avoid the exploding parts of the room. Hans and Franz is like Hygen's safety dance, only a way more refined version of it. The fight also gave a lot of people motion sickness because of the conveyor belts, so I don't see Blizzard doing something exactly like it again, but it was still a very well designed fight in my opinion. Number 2, the Faction Champions. The only fight in game where you PvP while doing PvE. Well, that's not entirely true, there was also a dungeon boss with a similar mechanic in the Burning Crusade. But Faction Champs was the first and only time something like this has been done in a raid setting. And people did not like it one bit, so I doubt we'll see something like it again. The fight itself worked like a huge arena match. The Faction Champs would try to focus down one person at random, and you had to keep them alive while also killing them. The Champs could all be CC'd, but they were subject to PvP durations and DRs so you couldn't CC them for very long. It was also a lot easier to just focus down their members one at a time, and most guilds didn't really bother with CC on easier difficulties. The faction champs could absolutely target your healers, since they just kinda ignored the tanks for the most part. And this is part of the reason people didn't like it. The fight was just chaos with not enough pillars for the healers to hump, for it to feel like a true, genuine PvP fight. Now, the number one fight in this list isn't necessarily the most unique boss fight on this list, but it is a unique boss fight that is almost universally loved and used as an example of how to do a good unique boss fight. And that of course is Operator Thogar. I don't know if you've been keeping count, but this is the third boss I've listed from Blackrock Foundry. People may shit on Warlords of Draenor all the time, but even the most hardened critic of the expansion will say, Warlords of Draenor was a shitty expansion. Except for its raids, those were good. Most of the criticism for the expansion was due to a lack of content, which is totally understandable and a fair point to be made, but some of the content we did get 
especially the raids, were top notch. Even Black Hand, the final boss of Black Rock Foundry, is an amazing and unique boss fight. Just not unique enough for this video. But you can be sure he'll show up in a future video about excellent end bosses of raids. But enough about all that, let's get back to the number one spot. Now, Operator Thogar is, for the most part, a pretty standard boss fight. But just like Hans and Franz, the room itself is trying to kill you the whole time you're doing it. Periodically throughout the fight, trains will come through one of four doors and zip past you. If you're in the lane where the train is at, there's a good chance you'll die if you don't have some kind of immunity cooldown. Trains will also sometimes come by and drop off ads, or maybe just hang around and fire cannons at the raid. On Mythic Mode, one train will come in and move along slowly while shooting a flamethrower that everyone has to run through quickly to not take too much damage from it. The trains in the fight are part of the gimmick, and have one-shot potential, but also are a vital part to the other mechanics of the fight, which make them feel like an integral part of the encounter, rather than just a one-off gimmick that gets annoying on repeat attempts which is why I think it succeeds the most as a unique boss fight when compared to the other fights on this list. Most of the other fights on this list were hated at their time, whereas Thogar is actually well liked, and its mythic mode is considered one of the best mythic fights ever made. Plus, it's a really cool looking fight on top of all that. So what do you think? Did I miss a super unique boss fight that should have been on the list? I know Black Fuse is also commonly known as a unique boss fight that was well loved, but I personally hated that fight, so there's no way I was going to put it on this list.